Alright, hello everyone. This is Game of Cal. We're playing some Marissa Land Legacy today. It's a uh, SMB1 style Mar uh, Toho game, basically. Marissa has gone ahead and done weird experiments again, and she's gone all small. She needs to find a mushroom, I guess it's the right size. The usual sort of deal, except instead of toads, it's mushrooms this time. So! We are playing Warpless, we are going to be doing all 32 stages here, and obviously that means we need to start at World 1. Thankfully if things go super wrong there is a start a particular world thing here, but we won't need to do that. So yeah, let's just get going. Hello, let's just get going in 3, 2, 1, begin. So. Like I said, this is effectively SMB1 style. We have our semi-traditional power-up system here. We do have a P-Speed system in this game, which is obviously a little bit ahead of SMB1. But it does function slightly differently to the Mario 3 and Mario World styles that you would normally see. And we'll actually get to see that kind of in the next stage here, because there's a lot of ways that you can sort of preserve that speed in this game, and also build it up over multiple platforms, but we don't get to see that quite so much now. So here we are going to just pull back very slightly so we don't just run straight into the pit, and then that's that's enough. If, so long as we're holding forwards when I hit the ground, we will actually be able to keep going at the faster pace. One thing I do like about this run is that we do tend to use the fuzzies as Cooper shells a lot more than what the typical sort of Mario game would do. So that's always fun too, getting to ricochet them off in fun ways because it's actually faster in a lot of cases to do that. Um, so yeah, it's you stand this little run, jump through. There's a lot of technical platforming in places here that's not as simple as it looks because kind of like SMB1, there's a bit of an inertia-based system here. You need to have some actual forward momentum before your jumps mean anything. So a lot of seemingly simple looking gaps, even like that one there, if you just try and jump from a standstill, you aren't going to make it. You need to have some forward momentum. Anyone who's played SMB1 or Mario 35 Recessed in Peace will know exactly what I mean with that. One of the other things that we actually do have in this run though is a little bit of air control in terms of holding the jump button down. So I know it's not unique to a game like uh, to have a game like this have, oh hold the jump button down and uh, it will, you know, slow your fall a bit. Oh. Okay, uh, let's not risk that then. <laughs> you are supposed to jump over that uh, that fairy, but uh, hit your head on the roof and it kind of uh, kind of messes with that. Uh, here are the, the bosses of this game. Uh, I gotta imagine a lot of programming went into making this actually look like a proper rotating circle. I don't know. It's silly. You've just got to not free uh, free hangs into it. It is an instant kill no matter what power up state you're in. However. So, uh, yeah, even if you are at like six heads tall, Marissa, which we're about to get into, uh, don't run into it. It's an instant kill. So, there aren't really any ways of getting to our fire Marissa state in the first uh, world here, but now we can. So the small mushrooms will go from two heads tall to three heads tall, or four if you are at three heads tall already. These larger ones will double... Ooh. Okay, uh, I think we can still recover that. We can recover our head height later on. Um, the mushrooms that get you to three heads tall, they'll turn these into turn blocks. Uh, the little cookie blocks here. And the double mushroom, when you get to six heads tall, will go into the fire state. Which we will hopefully be able to show here. Luckily, there are plenty of backups in this uh, early world to, to actually get this here, uh, but we now have to contend with the dreaded, like, cheap, cheap stages. The old classic fish percent in our, in our own chat here, I don't even... I think it was from the previous Marissa game that that ended up coming from. Our fireballs go straight, so we can't actually hit things that are directly on the ground here. We do kind of have a lot of random spawning, you know, fishies to go in here. And it's pretty frustrating because there's a lot of time that can be lost to those things. But hey, it, it is what it is. I don't have to show the backup here. You can get this power up back in this stage. 
because if you've seen the rainbow stars here, they're kind of dragon coins, basically. If you want to go for 100%, there's a lot of them in secret places. Those four stars there actually hide a double mushroom, so that you can uh, you can have this power-up for the ending bit there. There's a star that you've got to shoot in, uh, in that section, those uh, four end blocks there, so... You need to, if you need the power up in the stage, it will provide it. So thankfully, we do get a second chance at it here. But that is totally fine. So, uh, there aren't too many sort of points of RNG in this game. The, this is not one of them, but it's just a decent enough time to talk about it because there's a movie platform that we can't really bypass. There's not a lot of invincibility frames in this either. I really wish that I could just damage boost this room. But it takes longer than actually like killing the boss with the fire, so yeah. Uh, 15 fireballs is all you need for it, basically. And uh, as many of them as possible we are going to do the kills on. But as you can appreciate, Marissa at this height is a lot taller than any of the any of the previous heights that we've had. And this damage boost is on purpose because you are too tall to get through the next stage in a decent, decent fashion. Two heads tall is too small for this, but three is just the right height. If you're six heads tall of this, it actually, actually doesn't quite work out. So this is, I was mentioning P-Speed like preservation and stuff before. You can see I, I got P-Speed again when I went on to the the long platform there, even though it really looked as if I shouldn't have it, because it's just the right amount of turnbacks that's not going to make it. Uh, with a really good jump, you can actually not have to grab the vine there, but yeah, I could easily tell that's, that's not going to cut it, so just have to deal with it. So... Yeah, there's a lot of lot of little strats like the like that in free one where we can kind of do some very funky things to to build ourselves up here. Uh, grab this guy just to take out the jungle fairy. The jungle fairies are no joke. You really don't want to deal with them. And now we have uh, sunflower fairies, which uh, they happen to be the hammer bros of this game. Uh, they do also have a triple shot, just like regular hammer bros do. So. They are a little bit annoying. They're not really too prevalent, though. It's mostly in the last couple of levels that we see them, so... It's not going to be too big of a deal. What is going to be a big of a deal, though, is this stage up here. Because now we get into cloud platforms, and these are very, very annoying. They add to this note blocks from SMB3, but they instantly kill your momentum if you don't jump, like, off the edge of them. Thankfully, first half of this has gone well, and if we do this right, we can bounce off the fairies and avoid interacting with them entirely. Because nuts to them! That's, uh, that's like, such a huge detriment to, to like, timing stuff there. We are going to have to deal with them a couple of times later on, but that's the biggest problem. So... Let's hope that that's all that comes up on it. So, free free here, we now get introduced to Flomp Fuzzies, and you actually can jump on the top of these, we're gonna have to do that later on. Um, we're supposed to do it here, ah, missed a jump, that's unlucky. Uh, yeah, we, we were supposed to jump on them there. You can duck jump underneath that, it saves about three seconds, we're gonna have to do this the hard way now, unfortunately. Um, that's fine. So yeah, this, this arena sucks. <laughs> There's not really any other way of putting it. This is absolutely terrible for that. Um, fire kills on average save around uh, tw 11 to 14 seconds or so, depending on the arena. This obviously being one of the longer ones. And yeah, it's, it's pretty frustrating, to be honest. Unfortunately, this is going to have some ripple effects later on as well. We ideally want to keep that power through all of this world as well because there isn't actually an opportunity to at least in a reasonable time frame to pick up fire again in this world there is a double mushroom in the next level but it's so far off the beaten path that it wastes too much time so we're not going to get to see it unfortunately here um but that's okay so little pullbacks here so that we can make sure that i don't actually run straight into spikes, but do get to keep the P-Speed. So that's the main thing. So, 
there are a couple of things that we can do instead here. Like overall, this is the lowest, uh, the lowest amount of time save that a fire kill gets. So we still have a few things that can, oh, a few things that can happen here, uh, such as getting speared by bamboo. I suppose that is a thing that can happen. Uh, so, pff, pipes are obnoxious, let's just put it that way. So one thing here, you can build up P-Speed over multiple platforms. So, like, even though I wasn't actually running for a very long time on any one platform, you could see there, over the course of the four of them, I was able to pick it up at just the right sort of point that I could actually, you know, run at full speed by the end of it. Even though I, I want the power up up here. Let's be real, we got to be a little bit safe here. It is, uh, we are playing marathon stuff after all. This, well, is like so good up until this point. This is the only true auto scroller in the entire game. There are a couple of other points, as we saw in 2 4, that are auto scrollless, but like this is the only one that you can't really skip. And. It's, it's unfortunate because this game is doing so well. So many platformers and Toho ones especially end up falling into the trap of having like a dozen auto scrollers in the, the course of the run. This one only really has like one and a half. Uh, I guess if you want to count the 2 4 bit, like one and a half plus one section is really not too big of a deal. But we'll get to that in 5 2 because that's the other one that, uh, that kind of does that. But we've still got this stage to do first. There's bamboo spikes and stuff in this one as well. This stage is kind of hard to do with the fire strats, but we can still do some pretty fun stuff with it here as well. That jump is really hard to make when you are like twice as tall as this. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, with a really tiny tap, you can you can actually make these uh, make these jumps. Like so, uh, not even like so. Unfortunate, but it is what it is. You, uh, you've got to just barely scrape the jump button to get through there, but if you can, then it does save a bit of time running over them, rather than waiting to, to get them to run under you, or like jump over you even, so you can run under. But that's fine. So, we are just going to do our two head tall strats here instead. This this next stage can go like five different, well not quite five, three or four different ways depending on what power up you have to start this one. So we're just going to go in with the vanilla thing here. There are so many juggle fairies in this one. If you are six head tall Marissa from the fire kill, you can actually like shoot your way through some of these. Uh, at two, we're just going to do that. If you come in at four heads tall, actually, is what I wanted to do from the previous stage. There's a double mushroom at the start, which gets to the eight head tall state. And that is a mega mushroom, which we just don't really get to see. Oh, let's not take any chances off of that. We just don't get to, to see that in the actual speedrun, because it's never faster. But it's good if you can do it, you know? <laughs> I will find a fifth way at some point. We will make it five. I don't know how, but we'll make it five. Anyway, uh, this is the other stage that we go with uh, as a pseudo auto scroller here. Unfortunately, the fire bars are on a global timer. There's not, like, it looks as if I'm being really slow at the start. You can be a little bit faster through that opening section, but then the fire bars here will just not be at the right time. Like, you, there's not really any way of going faster with that. So we are going to damage boost. We're going to damage boost at the end too, because as you'll see, the uh, fire bars just do not line up to be favorable whatsoever here. So damage boost it is. And yeah, that's that's the only other quote unquote auto scrolling stage that we have here. And it's not really auto scrolling. It's just a cycle basing. Uh, unfortunately, the Podobo type things here, these do not follow the same pattern as the, uh, the fire bars. They spawn at a fixed point off uh, off screen as you're reaching them, and then as you can kind of see here, it is entirely random when they show up after that. And you can lose quite a bit of time to them. It also means crazy stuff like that is actually the safest way to get through this section. This isn't even showing off, it is genuinely the safest way of getting through here is to preempt your jumps, because the they, you know, with such a random timing on them, they'll just blitz you otherwise. So, now we get on to one of the most difficult stages here. There's a pretty crazy looking 
uh, strat to do here, which will save about five seconds at the end of this room. We have to get down here as quick as possible, get an early jump so we don't get caught by a early Podobo cycle there as well. And the goal of that craziness is to skip that cycle. We can get underneath that fire bar, and if you don't end up doing that, you will lose a lot of time because the other fire bars will just keep getting in the way. So, yeah. This room, there's, I've never managed to find a fully consistent way to, like, P-Speed through that room, because the first two fireballs spawn... Oh, here's the perfect example, right? See that all of these spawned immediately as soon as the boss started? Now look at how crazy the patterns are here. It's kind of wild. Um, we need this power-up at the end here, not for, like, beating this boss or anything, but because the next stage is actually built around Mega Marissa, so it's only uh, double mushrooms, which are in the stage. We don't want Mega, we want Fire, so we need to go in at three heads tall rather than two or four, so that we can actually get the power-up at the beginning of the stage. Because yeah, there's a lot of a lot of the the stars that the rainbow stars in this one are actually in like block clusters that you can plow straight through with Mega Rosa. That jump is a lot harder than it looks to do because again, if you don't immediately jump off of these cloud platforms when they're groups like that, you will lose your forward momentum immediately, and it's super annoying. The stage went really well actually. Um, not really any complaints over that. So yeah, World Six is ice. Go figure, it's uh, SMB3 all over again, right? Ice Physics do have a pretty wacky set of uh, consequences to them if you don't just keep moving forward. Uh, like, trying to jump backwards off of this, your like, ground speed and air speed are completely different. It's super weird. So we hold the jump button here to land on the ferry, immediately let the jump button go so we can uh, go ahead and bounce off the, the next ferry. And that's pretty much this stage in a nutshell. So, good stuff. So, we saw 2-2 with the Cheap Cheeps and how annoying they could be. <sighs> now we have Cheap Cheeps on ice because of course we do. <laughs> Why would we not, right? <laughs> this is one of the more obnoxious levels here because there's no way of getting this power up back uh, from this point on. This is like a, basically a point of no return. These things can come up at just about any angle and you are slightly faster than them in terms of movement speed. So yeah, very lucky actually I managed to get through both of the stages without taking a hit. That's really good. So now we have a chance of doing fire kill on the World 6 boss here, which is just straight up on, you know, just on ice. Nothing really too fancy with it, but here we get to see the proper f bouncing off of the, the flaunt fuzzies here. So you actually do have to duck there because you're too tall to get through otherwise. So big jump, big jump, spray a couple of fireballs to get rid of them. Unfortunately, didn't quite make the stair jump there. Uh, you can sometimes make the jump up there and it does save a little bit of time, just like rushing here. Yep, bounce off the second one to get up there. Tight jump to make, but it does work. And now this is the last time we are going to see any sort of fire kill here because, like I've said a couple of times, some of these stages are too difficult to get through at a decent pace with fire. It doesn't save time in the end. You're only saving, again, 11 to 14 seconds or so. So if you can't like get through the stages fast enough for that, doesn't work out. There's a double mushroom hidden at the left-hand side of the screen there in case you do need it. Um, but we obviously don't, so we're fine there. Deliberate damage boost here because the next part is going to be too lo uh, too difficult to get through. There's some low hanging ceilings and stuff. Holding the jump button down here to build up P-Speed as fast as possible to get through that. A uh, little bit of a turn back here so I don't run straight off the edge. And holding the jump button down there again. If you don't hold the jump button down, you're just going to go straight in the pit. But thankfully, I am well enough versed in that that it doesn't usually happen at this point. <laughs> usually. Okay, 7-2, also in the underground bit here. This stage is kind of tricky and introduces us to the fairy cannons. So we have bullet bills in this game too. They follow the same sort of rules as the fireballs, uh, the, the, you know, powder bows basically. They will go ahead and shoot off screen. Here's our final damage boost of the run, uh, because it's too, too slow getting through there otherwise. Yeah, they will fire the set spot off screen, and then they are random as to when they'll fire after that. 
thankfully, for pretty much all of them, we could ignore that entirely, because you can just P-Speed through the whole sections. That said, this is probably the hardest stage of the game, because there's a lot of single tile jumps here. One thing I've not really mentioned with this game at the moment is that single tile jumps are super annoying to get through. Uh, it's very, very easy to just like run off the edge with it here. Unlike a lot of platformers, I don't really seem to get a lot of uh, what you'd call coyote time in this game because I don't know why they just didn't want to implement it. Coyote time being the mechanic where you can actually jump when you are just off the platforms. So say the exaggerated one is uh, Diddy's like roll jump, basically. It's a very exaggerated motion, but that's the kind of idea. Um, so yeah, this stage has got a lot of cannons in it. You actually can get to Six Heads Tall Marissa here. There's two power-ups in that section for it. But once again, it actually just loses so much time trying to get through this section when you are like six times taller than this that it just doesn't actually work in the end. Like, it's, it's weird that, you know, you would think from Mario that, oh, fire killing is always best. But no, it just doesn't work here. So once again, the, there are off-screen cannons here. You can see they all fired at the same time to begin with. Uh, this actually looks like really good RNG. You can end up having a couple of seconds wasted here because the fairies just get in the way of the final uh, the final shell. And yeah, that's World 7. So, one more to go, one super hard stage and a couple of a uh, couple of tricky sections to go with it. Let's see what we can do. So here we're going to go under the the fuzzy there, jump second, third, fourth platform. You actually can't go from second to fourth. So that's fine, run under those ones. Here we want to land on the left brick, just like that, so we can skip over the cycle. And from there, I haven't really worked out like a super fast way of doing this yet, unfortunately. Feels like there should be a better way than that, but you know, it is what it is. Go break through the brick there. Don't chuck the fuzzy too high up there, actually, because you'll clip into the wall and you've got to kind of wait for him to to come back down. It's kind of funny actually, but you know, waste time. And we carry the last one because of the juggle fairy there. So, yeah. Alright, now for probably the craziest stage of the game. This is Bullet Bill Blast of the level, and it's kind of wild. We're just gonna just run straight through it, but you can kind of see like there's a lot of potential. If you're too slow during this, there's a lot of potential for things to just, you know, amass out and just fire at you. One third, fifth, get up on top of the, the top cannon so we don't have to worry about any RNG. Straight in. Okay. Yeah, being powerful isn't necessarily the best in this game, for sure. Uh, there are definitely moments that you want it, but yeah, this is totally fine as well. So, this is reminiscent of SMB1 83 because we do have the same sort of formations there. There are power-ups in a couple of these as well, but we're not going to go for them because we don't need to. Build up P-Speed to run under that. There is a RNG strat that we can do here, avoiding getting the uh, red fuzzy there, but sometimes the last fairy out of the three of those uh, Hammer Fairies will just kind of hit you with no recourse. Unfortunately, that is also the case in this last stage too. Just the one stage left to go here. We uh, unfortunately can get hit here, as un you know demonstrated. This happened the last time I did this in the marathon as well. It's pure RNG. We need to skip the cycle here because it's uh, the platforms, the moving platforms are also on global cycles. So these platforms here will be off center if we try and use a shell on them. So we do need to go for it as much as it pains me to do so. Uh, we deliberately stop here to line up the fairy juggle cycle so we can get under there, get P-Speed back as quick as we can. We're on a marathon run here, so we'll take the time to get the extra power up hidden at the end here. And yeah, I understand it is a shame we didn't get to see the eight heads at all. Unfortunately, getting hit a couple of times in 4-4 kind of stopped that, but it's fine. So we have a safe spot here, but uh, heads up at the end of this, these, uh, these sunflowers can, just like that, kind of come down the messings up. I have died to that at the end there. There we go. <sighs> that is Ruslan Legacy. That was only... That was less than 30 seconds away from the record that I have, I did like two days ago to 
that's awaiting mm -hmm. verification at the moment. So that was a fantastic mm -hmm. run. Just one unfortunate RNG death at the end, and a couple of worlds didn't really go our way in terms of the fire stuff, but hey, it is what it is. So, yeah, this game is kind of frenetic. This, like, it doesn't look that complicated until you actually play it and see just how these physics interact. Uh, this, this, you can break these bricks, there's sort of all the scroll stuff with it here. It is what it is. But, it's like the one glitch in this game is that if you actually get yourself scrolled off screen here, you're supposed to chuck a mushroom at Alice at the end. Spoilers, Alice is allergic to mushrooms for whatever reason. If you play as Alice in this game, she will actually just die if she gets a power up. And yeah, you just you just teleport back in the middle of the sky. It's pretty great. Yeah. So that is Rosal and Lexi. Thank you guys very much for watching this. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed playing it. And uh, yeah, enjoy the rest of the marathon, guys. There's a lot of good stuff to come off of it.